Fladel Supe, adică supă cu clătite. Sună neobișnuit pentru mulți dintre noi, dar în Elveția este un preparat care se pune pe masa de Crăciun. În paralel, gătim și tafelșpit zupe, adică supă cu spată de vițel, după o rețetă a austriecilor. Mâncarea apropie oamenii și perioada sărbătorilor, când suntem mai toleranți, este cea mai bună să descoperim cât de mult avem de fapt în comun, indiferent de locul unde ne-am născut. Șef Jacob Hausmann, reprezentantul Elveției și diplomatul Gerd Bumer, reprezentantul Austriei, fac Crăciunul împreună cu noi. Sunt Cristina Cilacu. Începe pașaport diplomatic. My mom's and my, my dad's um, wedding wedding stuff. It's actually what they got for their wedding. So I'm gonna use this one now. As it is my mom's uh, soup, we should do it like this. Chef Jakob Hausmann, uh, Gerd Bomar, diplomat, Austrian diplomat, welcome for the second edition, the three of us together for the Christmas edition of Diplomatic Passport. Thank you for the invitation. Well, uh, the last time we did film together uh, was uh, something that I asked about your uh, childhood Christmas and both of you give an answer uh, about pancake soup. For a lot of Romanians it sounds quite weird to be blunt. And I have to ask you, uh, Ger, remind us what is a pancake soup, the Austrian version, and of course, Jakob, the Swiss version, since you guys are from uh, different countries. Yes, yeah, so thanks very much for being here. Bine ați venit a casa mea. And uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you again. But the one who talked about the flatly soup, the Schweizer flatly soup, was actually Jakob. So he talked about the pancake soup. And I guess he, we got lost in translation somewhere. So what it is in Austria is a frittatensuppe. But what we agreed on in the end is like we're going to do the Christmas soups that we're having for Christmas and that our mothers made for us over so many years. And there are slight differences. And we're going to talk to you about the differences also today. Okay. So I'm happy so to have Jakob here. This uh, flatly soup, this is nothing else like a clatita. In Romania, this exists also on the market. This soup at the clatita, they yes. Uh, it's nothing else like the clatita, what it's called, what nobody would eat. We cut in small slices and we put in a chicken soup or a beef soup or vegetable soup. This is like my mother used the sweetness. Platita includes Sasha, like we have in Romania, omelette with marmalade, with chocolate, and this is what our dessert, and the rest what nobody eat, she cut it and she put on the soup. Why in, in um, your countries you have soup as a dish for Christmas? Because, for instance, you both are in Romania for quite a long time already, to know that for Christmas, for a holiday, we have, uh, let's say, more fancy meals on our tables. So why soup? Soup is simple. I can just speak now for Switzerland, I think it's the same as in Austria. Soup is for us a base of a menu. We start in the summer with a salad and in the winter with a soup. This is all the time the base. And 
In the soup, you have a lot of ingredients plus. You have meat and vegetables, and after you can fill it with uh, pasta, you can fill it with tetzé, uh, with clatita, you can fill it with everything what you want. This is the base. Because in the generality, in this time when we go up, we don't make just one liter or two liter, we make 10 liter soup. I think what's to your mother the same. They make a big balls and they put everything inside, what was vegetables, what was on the market, what was in the underground, in the hood, yeah. stores inside and there you have was cut off and so on, everything and this was the base of a soup. For this was like in my home and in Switzerland was normal. Gerent food is uh, of course a good tool for a diplomat and yeah. I have to say to the public that you trained for this uh, specific <laughs> recording uh, because first of all you did the soup and you uh, serve it to your staff here at the commercial section of yeah. the Austrian embassy and then you had a second uh, talk with your mom in order to you know, improve it, to improve perfectionize it. it exactly. Huh? So, <laughs> well, what actually happened is um, I bought something, some kind of meat that was not the meat that my mom wanted because what my mom always did for us is the very famous Tapaspitzen also, which is actually called Spate de Vita um, in Romania or in Romanian language. And um, I didn't find last time the Spate de Vita, the Tapaspitz itself, but it was a very nice meat that I had from uh, Bucharest here. And then I asked uh, Jakob and I said, like, where can I get Tafelspitz? He gave me the right source, which is very close to my house. And uh, I got real Tafelspitz today. Um, you see it in here. So I guess also coming back to what you said about the soup, why the soup? The soup is something that we ate over days. So the first day, we usually had the soup with noodles and uh, also Tafelspitz and also some kind of sausages that we had inside. And the second day, you got the soup with something else maybe, or also again noodles, but no meat anymore. So it's kind of, um, yeah, a very, it's, it's, it's a food over a few days. And my mom helped me last time where I did it in the middle of the night because I didn't expect it to last four hours. <laughs> so I had my first um, bowl of soup then at like 2 a.m. And uh, the, next may, uh, the next day my mom told me everything that I should have done and she told me that I should have used bay leaves and so on, which I also forgot this time, so we have to put the bay leaves back again, is it, Jakob? We have to put some bay leaves in here. Mm. Mom, do you see this? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you forget the lawyer, the Freude Dauphin. Okay. So it's a failing. <laughs> In the kitchen don't exist a rule, don't exist a law. Everybody do how he feel. And for this is the advantage of the kitchen. And this is also the base how we go up with our families. We don't was so rich of just day by day meat. For us was a lot of things together to eat. Example, the soup that we make, doesn't matter with beef or with chicken, this was a base for a lot of meals. Even you can boil the kartoffel inside, you have after like a puree what you can eat it with this together. Even the vegetables inside, I remember me and my mother gave this and we put this with the fukulitsa, we make like a puree with the celine, with the morkov and this and we eat this and there we have a piece of chicken, what was inside. The soup was before with the, the tzeik, with platita and after we eat the chicken with the vegetables, this means uh, our parents, I think it's also in Romania the same, they are very creative with a small part of food to make a very big dishes and this is the same what we have in Switzerland like childhood and for this I'm very proud and I tell all the time the best cook is not the chef with three stars, the best cook for me is the mother in home what make with this what is on the market now in Local. a good price, mm -hmm. with this to make for home, for a family with six, four, five people, doesn't matter daily, daily, a good meal. Besides this soup, let's describe an, a traditional Austrian Christmas uh, evening meal. Yeah, I guess this is also one part of the soup because the soup takes uh, several hours. Yeah, it usually takes like four hours for the tapas spitz to be ready. And uh, my mom started actually in the morning time already with the, with the meat and everything else. And uh, it was kind of a complete procedure until, you know, we heard the bell and uh, we had some kind of curls, goldish curls on the, on the floor and uh, we, we had the Christmas uh, um, dinner, so to say, and, and, and the Christmas tree. And that was part of the whole procedure because it took several hours. So everybody smelled it, everybody knew about it, that it's going to come up. And this is kind of, you know, getting, creating the atmosphere and the setting for, for Christmas. Uh, Jakob, is a family tradition to cook together when it's a holiday for a 
everyone to be involved or is just mainly the mom and the, the kids are smelling as yet? No, said. I have been trained by my mom but obviously not well enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the problem. This is a generation question. When I was young, the kitchen was the smallest place, have one window and the door is closed and my mother was inside. Nobody was involved in it in this job. On the weekend when we have guests, my mother and my father changed the place. And my water was out, but the door was closed. Now is something else. Now the biggest place in, the, in an apartment is more the kitchen, it's with the nice places, and the socialize. And this is what I'm very happy, because in this moment we give also more attention what we eat and how we eat. This means it's not just a chicken what is after just on the spoon. It's a chicken how I see it's coming. I put them in the cold water, I boil them up, I give the cut it the vegetables. It is a process what is in a family. I think it's a way to respect more the food what we eat and this is important. Because when we was young, our mother teach us to have respect of the food. There was not just because we wait, you can imagine, there was my father, my brother, my sister, me and my mother, and my mother take the plate and she put the soup inside and after the meat and the vegetable for my father. After the same for me. After for my brother, the last was my sister because was the young one and the finish she made for her. And when you see the quantity on the plates of meat, was clear who was the chef. This was like so. For a chicken, my father received all the time the pulpe, okay. and I received a half of a pulpe, and my sisters and my, uh, they received the, uh, wings. the wings. This was the regulation in my home of changing food. I think this is the way how we learn when we are young, more respect, and this is now very important. And I'm happy the kitchens are open. Let's get back to the training soup you did for your staff here at the commercial uh, section. Did they receive this type of uh, proportion as well or how did you share it well, with it your group? Equally shared. Um, it was kind of a night shift that I did and I tested it myself because I called my mom at 10 p.m. after I came home from a dinner and I said like, mom, how long is this soup going to take? And then she told me four hours and I was like, whoa. <laughs> so at 2 a.m. I had my first plate. I tested it for all my colleagues. And uh, the next day for lunchtime we had the soup, everybody got the same amount. Um, we had something different because with the Dafish pizza as you saw it's like kind of one kind of meat and uh, we split it evenly and uh, it was a really good thing so my employees were all happy. My mom was able to join the WhatsApp group for a few hours of my, <laughs> of my office <laughs> and got all the positive comments but you know I bribed them beforehand so I to have of to course. be honest. So and I told them you know <laughs> no pay rise if, <laughs> if you don't report positively. Uh, but the next day in the morning I also had a call with my mom and my mom told me like you know you now you have to add the bay leaves, you have to add thyme, you have to do this, you have to do that. So I hope that this one is much better and that we have an opportunity to taste it afterwards. We will taste and it. But uh, to get back a bit to the respect uh, uh, on how food is done and how food is uh, created and uh, prepared, we have a habit, I don't know if it's the same in your countries, but in Romania, in, uh, after Christmas, when everyone is cooking a lot of food, uh, people have this tendency of going to the malls and have uh, some fast food in the Christmas day or something like that. Where do you think this happens with, uh, with people? Believe me, I'm out of this discussion because really I don't know. Okay. Uh, because when you see typical Romania, we have this six week of post. What we try to make our body clean, we believe, doesn't matter what direction we make, believing always healthy. After six weeks, starting this uh, cutting the pork, pomano porcoli and all the things, and we have plates full of meat without limit and we eat so much food in a short time, but it's not good because our body has to learn again to make another process. For me, it's eating a celebration. I know I have some kilo plus, but I'm a cook and I have permanent, even now, half of the chicken, it's already eaten just to test it. <laughs> the first, you know, the first platita, what you make, it's for the animals. I don't give to the I eat self because I test it, and in this moment, you eat a little more, and you eat more things, what is not all the time, in a calorie calculation. But I don't care because I make my sport, I'm healthy. But generally, so 
when you eat slowly and you give the test of the food, you respect what you eat, you know what you put in the pan inside, you know what you put in the cuptor inside, and you see this from the beginning, and you know the process from R until it's to your plate, you have another respect of meal. And I think this is the most step. Go quickly to eat a fast food, to eat something like this or to do. For this we have a problem. Kids believe the schnitzel in the supermarket they are coming like this, like it's a factory what makes schnitzel. They don't understand it's coming from an animal, what it's going up, how slowly it's going up, how much more testful it's. We speak before about the meat here mm -hmm. in Romania with mm -hmm. this Angus meat, what it's a long term to go up. It's another test. When you see a chicken now it's in three weeks. It's from a small chicken from an eggs, it's coming in the pen. How it's possible? In the past this needs six, six months to one year because we have a chicken and this is the way how we have to learn and I think our mothers teach us this. Now we have to teach our also kids to go in this way inside and this is the most important. You have to taste the soup and tell me if it tastes like the, uh, the soup of your uh, childhood. <laughs> So, with my mom, I guess it was a, uh, just let's go for the soup itself. It's so, good. So, how is it? It's good. But? It brings back memories. But I guess my mom did a better job, to be honest with you, right now. And I think, um, also talking about the, the food, it's also an experience. The cooking is an experience and that's what brings us together. So this was not delivered, we did it ourselves. We already spent like three and a half hours here together, <laughs> Jacob yeah, and yeah. me. We yeah. didn't film everything, and I have to tell the truth for the public, yeah. but yes, they it's, did. <laughs> but it, it's really good, I like it. Um, also, all my employees liked it. And we should actually put in our phone numbers and uh, do some kind of delivery, you know. The people can order <laughs> it for Christmas. <laughs> so, uh, to end up this uh, Christmas discussion, what are we going, both of you, to cook for our third Christmas edition next year? <laughs> I have, like in Switzerland, what is a tradition now in the winter, it's starting now, and um, me, me personally, in Christmas, I have a cheese fondue. Yeah. This is yeah. a typical tradition in the time, and it's cold outside, and this is, uh, I think everybody loves this, a uh, really good making cheese fondue with the real quality of cheese, with a good wine, with a good bread, and a little dry meat around, and a, this we can do next year. Okay. And we'll be a famous and will be a good success for the telespectator in home. But this is Swiss, so Austria, what is preparing? So coming to Austria, I guess, you know, the reason is in the history and uh, us being a country with big mountains like the Switzerland. So the provinces in Austria had different food. We had this, um, my wife comes from Tyrol, and uh, there they had fondue, but not cheese fondue, but the regular fondue with uh, meat and everything and soup itself. And they had the soup as well, so it was kind of the same food, but prepared in a different way. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what we do next time, I mean, the best cheese fondue I had here in Bucharest. This is nice. Friends. Let's make together a competition of fondue. Okay. He, yeah. You make the fondue with the soup, with the meat, but it's also something. Fondue Bourguignon of in Fondue Chinois is the name of this. Yeah, but then I have to call my mom again. It's like, <laughs> well, it's good to call your mom. Your it's mom good. Will help yeah, you. Absolutely. I cannot call to my mom because she's too far away, but I think it's a nice competition to make a cheese fondue and a meat fondue in the way of a competition, not a competition, but to give to the people in home some ideas how we in our country make yeah. the celebration. Even we eat this fondue of meat, even you eat the cheese fondue, because the Austria and the Swiss, they are not so far away, because we are farmers. We work with this, what we have on the, on the, in the ground inside, what we take out, and the same products we use in different kind of things. Like you have the Turkish, you have Somali, we have Krautwickel, you make this with uh, Varza, Klatita, as a Kwasa Murata, we make with fresh Klatita, but the situation is the same, because we are both farmers and our food is not so far away. And I think this will be a nice competition yeah. next year, <laughs> two kinds of fondues. So we're already back again for next year. Good. But I, I have to say that next year we have to do it in a bit of a different way because usually I also invite people here and I cook myself. And when I, when I do that, and the dining room is right beside us, when I do that I don't invite people when all the food is ready. But I still cook like the main course or something like this right here. And you know, every good party ends in the kitchen. They also can start in the kitchen. And Even I think it's the experience, the getting together, being friends together. And uh, that's what it's all about. And for Christmas time this might even be more important. 
So and, maybe, uh, you will, as a family maybe you will give up diplomacy and turn chef as well. For now. If he teaches me the proper way. <laughs> but I guess we have to start with the sauces. <laughs> <laughs> and the situation is how can we be a diplomat? This will be a very nice thing. But we can do this to you. Or when we have the possibility, we can do this to my in the mountain where we was there. We can invite some friends. We have a big kitchen. Yeah. We and have we enough place to Make the cameraman more happy. Yes, make the cameraman <laughs> more happy because he has his five cameras in a big lodge. Even when the weather is nice like now to stay outside okay. is also very nice. Well, thank you so much for this second Christmas edi edition. Looking forward for the third one. It's a promise. So, uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you very much for being with us again and Krachun Ferici to everybody. Atât pentru astăzi, dar rămânem în continuare online pe pagina de Facebook a emisiunii și pe contul nostru de Twitter. Revenim cu subiecte noi din lumea diplomației și a politicii externe, vinerea viitoare de la 11.30 și reluare sâmbătă de la 22.30. Să avem un Crăciun frumos! Thank you.